Hi folks, this is Anne with an impromptu anagram on debugging infinite loops. Um, I'm starting at the place I left off on my previous video. We fixed a few token parsing errors. And so the code was running, but um, it was an infinite loop. And I want to show you how to A, recognize that's what's happening to you, and B, begin to find where your problem is. So um, let's go ahead and just run this Battleship app. Uh, which seems to have all the right code in all the right places um, and but doesn't seem to be responsive to user input. So let me go ahead and open up the page and I'm going to expand this window just a little bit. It gets fuzzy if I expand it too much so I think we'll close that window behind it, make it a little bit bigger and then um, the first thing I notice is that the behavior of this page is a little bit odd so um, it's not always 100% indication, but this little loading button just keeps going around and around. And I can't right click on this page and inspect to get to the console window. Um, and then eventually I get this message. So we're going to wait because um, I want to show you a couple of things. Normally you'd say exit page because if you have code in an infant loop, getting it to stop is kind of hard. I'm going to hit wait. One thing I'll show you is I can't, oh, I was able to close that. Sometimes you can't even close that. So let me run it, let me open it up again and show a couple of things. Um, first of all, if you can't right click to inspect, you, at least in Chrome, and I assume there's a way to do this in any other browser, you can come up to the menu for the browser versus trying to interact with the page, come down to more tools and get to your developer tools that way. And you can see we're not getting any error messages, uh, but the code is also just plain not running. And um, this can be really disturbing. It's also quite hard to um, sometimes know how to attack the problem. Um, frankly, because this is a book exercise, one of your options is to go through and just double check all of your code against the book. But um, this application is large enough that um, it could be really tedious to do that. So let's just talk about infinite loops for a minute. Um, in order to have an infinite loop, you have to have a loop. So let's just go through and inspect the code in this application, which could conceivably be putting us into an infinite loop. A um, couple other things, you can't hear it from where you are, but one thing that's happening to my machine is the fans come on. And basically this page is driving my machine to distraction. So I'm going to try to close it. Um, and again, I haven't gotten that message, but I was able to finally close it, and that'll make my fan go off. So while we inspect this code, we'll let my machine cool off. And um, what we're going to do is Control F to find. And let's just look at the four loops. Um, so to have an infinite loop, generally speaking, you need to have a loop that's, that's not quite right. So um, let's take a quick look at for loops. Um, in general, for loops, if the, if the top line, the control line, is well written, for loops are pretty safe. And while and do loops are much more likely to go rogue on you. But let's just take a, let's just take a quick look. Um, so we're going to look for four with a space after it. And um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and look at for every four just in case there, we have not spaces. So let's look. Okay, so that's just a comment. Here's a for loop. I is being initialized. I is being tested against a property of the current object, which exists. And this is a nice increment, I equals I plus one. So it's, so unless something really strange is happening, I wouldn't expect this, this for loop to be going rogue on us. So let's keep looking. Here's another one. We've got a well-formed initialization. We've got a test against a property of the object, and we're incrementing one thing at a time. Um, and ship length is a property of the object we're in, so that looks good. Uh, 
Um, here's another one, well initialized, num ships, I'm pretty sure is a property, well incremented. I wouldn't expect that one to be going rogue. That's good, I think we looked at, actually, okay, here's another one like that. Here's another one, ship link, length, let's double, I think that's a well-defined property, yep. Okay. Oh, I is being incremented. So, you know, for example, if you weren't incrementing I, this could easily go into an infinite loop. But as long as you're doing a well-formed increment of I, four loops are probably going to finish. There's another one that looks good. Oh, hang on, I'm supposed to be doing this methodically. There's that one. And there's that one. And that's a J loop. That's fine. It's nested. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that one. So why don't we um, why don't we look for the other kinds of loops? So while loops and do loops both have the word while in them, so let's look for that and see how many. We only have one while loop. So um, I would I would be I'm most suspicious of this code. It's also the new code. It's also um, another indicator is that that's in the new code that was we couldn't be testing because um, we had a parsing token. So um, let's just do a couple of things. Uh, one is you just need to figure out where the problem is starting. So let's leave ourselves some breadcrumbs. Okay. And here, if we, if we don't guess right in the first instance, then what we're going to do is have to add console logging in more places. But since this seems like the most likely, it's new code, it hasn't been tested, it has a while, do while loop in it, let's, um, let's just see if we see this message appear, the, the line 82 message appear in our console log, and we don't see this one. That's the quickest. So we want to get into, oh, let's be, let's, the English major in me says this to be entering generate ship locations and exiting generate ship locations. So now let's save that. Go back and um, open up a page. I'm going to shift refresh or try to. Um, open up my console log. and see if I'm getting anything in the console. Now the problem is I don't absolutely know, I'm not absolutely certain I'm running my newest code. So let's do this. Let's kill this. Okay. And now run it again. Yeah, not that one. This one. <laughs> I'm sure we're all tired of making that mistake by now. Open this up and see if we can see that first message. Okay, so we're never getting as far as our suspected um, error message, uh, as far as I can tell. Um, there's one more thing to try though, and that is actually change the name of the file. Sometimes when your code is in a infinite loop, you're not even getting your new code to run. This is a special case of, of your code getting stuck. So we're going to go back here. We're going to kill this process. We're going to close that just for neatness's sake. And now we're going to try something different um, just to make sure that we're um, running the code we think we are. I need a sanity check on that before I go much farther. So let's go down to init. Okay, so we know that when the window loads, we're supposed to be running the NIT. So let's just put a console log in here. Okay. 
it really doesn't matter what it says. Sometimes you just get feeling like you should do the right thing. So I'm going to add an entry. I'm going to add an exiting. Okay. And all the while, my machine, my fan is on. I can tell this is all in an infinite loop. Let's see if I can get these guys to close. Okay. So uh, we're going to, we know that for the page to run, init has to run. And it's the first thing that runs. So we are going to verify that we're running the version of code that we are typing in by um, starting the page again. And if we don't see this line up here in the console, then we know we have a problem with caching and we need to find a different way to make our new code run. So let's just, let's just do that sanity check. Uh, this button. Yeah. Okay. This button here. Okay. So we're going to go up here. More tools, developer tools. All right. So I'm not getting my new code. And um, that can be distressing. But there is a fix. And it may seem kind of kludgy and magical to you, but I don't know of any other fix. And that is, I've got this final, um, so caching, the caching that the browser does in order to improve report in performance is based on the names of the files. And if it thinks it has, is not downloading any new files, it will not voluntarily refresh those files. So what I'm going to do is give it a kick in the butt by, I'm going to change the name of this file okay to i don't know something funny like final final okay something your instructor will recognize when she's when she is grading i'm going to go down to my html file change the name here okay save that and go back and try to kill this page rerun the html and now i believe that when the browser opens the page it's going to think it has new code and will download this new version of the javascript that has our logging in it because again i haven't fixed the problem i'm just trying to find out where the problem is okay all right, well, we at least know that it is, hang on a sec, we haven't refreshed the, it's still looking for final. All right, this is frustrating to me and to you. Um, let's say Battleship HTML. Um, all right, let's try this. We're going to rename Battleship Final. I tell you, these infinite loop things really are hard. Okay. Now that that has a new name, we're going to close this. Close that. Run this file. And see if we can convince the browser that we have a completely new page and that it needs to reload the JavaScript. Okay. All right, more tools, developer tools, console. Take a look at network. Sources. Let's take a look. Trying to find out which files it downloaded. We don't think there can be an infinite loop before init if. Init is being run 
on window load. Which it is. I do not have an explanation for why we are not seeing that console logging. I'm going to pause the recording, frankly, have a drink of water, and see if I can figure out what I do next. Um, sometimes taking a break is really important. This meeting is being recorded. Hi, this is Anne again, um, back with more debugging on this infinite loop. Uh, infinite loops are kind of pernicious to start with, and this one's particularly pernicious. You're going to have to take my word for it that I didn't um, cheat and go compare line for line with book or anything on what the solution would be. But instead, I did what I do when I get stuck, which is stop, walk away from the keyboard, um, have drink water, or in this case, coffee because it's Sunday morning, and um, and just sort of reflect a little bit. And what I reflected on was um, my suspicion and the focus of what I have been doing so far in terms of trying to debug is on this new piece of code, generate ship locations. And so I put console logging in here and done everything and, and I was assuming that we were having trouble getting the JavaScript refresh because I wasn't seeing any of this logging. But then um, what I reflected upon was that the place where this code gets called is in this function called init. And init gets run on window load. And um, JavaScript's kind of interesting with logging. Um, I believe it considers logging a pretty low priority function. And so um, what you find is that you don't always see all the logging you expect and that it can be delayed by other things that are happy with the browser and in this case um, I think what's happening is because init is being run when the windows fully loaded and the piece of code we expect we think has the infinite loop is in init that essentially the windows never getting initialized well enough to even show us console logging so I'm going to work on that theory here for a while and see if I can prove that and then and then again make progress on this um, the actual infinite loop problem. So um, let's just take it one step at a time. I'm not going to comment out anything in init, but I am going to say don't worry about running init at window load. So essentially what happens is this page should load but do really nothing at all. And um, let's see if we can, oh, but I did, I did add one line of logging. So this isn't in a run method or anything. This is just inline code. And now if, um, if we don't run init and we don't get into an infinite loop, then we should see this line show up in the console. So I'm going to go back to Battleship um, HTML, run it, open the window, and um, looks good. We're getting the favicon instead of the little whirly. If I open up the browser window, it looks like I can get to inspect. I don't have any console errors but I am running one line of logging. Okay, so I think we have proven that whatever is going wrong, whatever the infinite loop is, it's happening in init. And if we don't run init, we don't have an infinite loop. But of course, then we also, with this version of the code, don't have any ship locations, which um, we can use the cheat from the book to see that now that the console will talk to us. Um, if I go model ships and I hit enter in, in Chrome, I don't think in other browsers I actually have to hit enter twice. I get a, an array of objects displayed. Each object is a location for a ship. And if I open those up, I see that those locations that we have for each ship, we have no hits and the location is set to zero, zero, zero 
which is part of the code change that we made when we added generate ships. Hang on, let me put my up. So if I go to generate ship locations, um, it's supposed to be adding specific locations for those guys. And in the model, we initialize the ships to no hits, no locations. So, um, so I'm pretty well proving that generate is, um, is the problem. Um, and the question is, what to do next? I think at this point, the next thing to do is take a look at the code, at the um, book code, read it, and see if we can figure out what's going on. Um, still, it might be worth one experiment. If we look at init, it basically, init is pretty simple. It sets up two handlers for buttons. We're not concerned about buttons yet because we don't have any code that's working. Okay. And then it calls model generate ship locations. And generate ship locations, if we jump to that definition, it does a line of logging and then it runs generate ship. And I'm kind of thinking, this code seems a little strange to me, um, but let's, let's at least see if we can run that code by hand. So um, I have been able, okay, we can see that we have our ships. So let's just say, okay, if we run this function, we have to put the parentheses after it to run it. We don't really need the semicolon, but I'm compulsive that way. Okay, and you can see that we're entering, we're finally getting the login we put in there originally. We're entering ship locations, but we are not exiting it. So I think the code is in an in a infinite loop right now. And I'm not sure if I can do any interaction with it now or not. No, if I type this in, I can't even hit enter. So I'm gonna have to kill this page and then think again about what to do next. Okay, so killing page here. That, close that. My fan comes on briefly. Um, So I think at this point we need to consult with the book. And unfortunately, the window I have um, open for um, this, this video won't let me show you the book, ebook. So let me just take a quick look um, and compare it with ship. Okay, so this code has two parts. Um, it sure looks very much like exactly what the book says. So, but there are two parts to it. One is getting the ship, okay? And, and we call generate ship to get a location. And then we try to keep doing that until we have no collisions. So if, for one time, we don't care about collisions, and we simply see if calling generate ship will work, then let's, let's see if we can get this code to not be an infinite loop. So I'm just gonna comment out these lines, okay? And what this code now is gonna do is that for zero to the number of ships, okay, we are going to generate one ship. We're going to add that to the look. We're going to make the locations. Okay, there should be three of them for that ship. The property of that particular ship. And what we're not going to do is check for collisions. 
Okay, so the theory of the crime here is that something about this collision detection is generating the infinite loop, and that if we decide we're not going to worry about, about collisions, we might be able to get a playable page up. So I'm going to save that. Okay, I'm going to come over here and run the file. Okay, I'm getting my favicon, which indicates we're loading. I'm going to inspect. I'm going to go to console. Um, I haven't run that method, so I need to run that method by hand. Generate ship. Uh, generate ship locations, I believe, is the one I want to run. Yeah, I want to run this one, the one we've modified. Okay, execute that. We're entering, we're exiting, it doesn't really return a value. So now we have ship locations. So let's just take a look at model.ships now. And we should see that each of our ships has a location. And in this particular case, just quite naturally, we didn't overlap. So we should have a playable game. Let's just uh, come down here and see. Uh, now, there could be other problems, but let's just say, oh, I always have trouble with this. Two, zero is, let's see if I can get this. Uh, does it do row first or column first? Two, zero would be zero, one, two, C0, let's see. Oh, and we don't have our, we don't have our buttons worked out. So I can't really test the code, but I can tell that it is um, running. So I'm gonna go back here and um, do a couple of things. Re-enable this. Okay. Come down here. I think I'll take this line out. Uh, refresh this page. We're entering in it, we're exiting in it, we're generating ship locations. So we've pretty well proven that if we go to generate ship locations, the error must be in collision locations. Okay, so if collision is returning a Let's think about this. If collision were, for example, always returning true, then we would be doing this over and over again. So we want to take a look at collision and see if the code that's supposed to return false, no collision, is working right or not. So we're going to just click over here. And remember, this is the one where the return false was kind of um, kind of in an odd location. So it's interesting, if you read this code, it says, okay, for each of the number of ships, grab the ship. And then there's a loop here, and the loop is always returning true. We don't, I'm almost saying there's a line of code missing here. So let's take a look at, I'm gonna, um, you should refer to your book. I can't show you the book, so I'm going to go and see if I can find the code for collision. And I recommend you do the same. Yeah, we're just missing one line of code. So if I grab that, um, we need to be doing a test. So what we want to do is for each of the ships, 
we want to check to see if it is overlapping with one of the other ships. And that requires a test, an if statement. So I think we've been missing that line of code. We only want to return true in the case there is a collision. And I'm going to apply formatting again because I always do. Okay. And um, now we think that collision will often return false. And if collision returns false, then we won't be doing this over and over again. So let's just take our heart in our hands, put all this code back in place, uh, make it pretty, and try saving it. Coming back over here to Battleship and running it, ship your Okay, so we don't see anything different in the console, but let's just take a look. Enter again. Okay, I would like to know that we're actually doing the collision detection before I declare victory. So I'm going to go down to this method, jump to definition, and um, Okay, we're going to console log here. Um, collision injecting ship. Because that's basically what's happening here, right? If you find a collision, we want that other code to go and give us another ship to try. And here, if we get all the way down to the bottom. We go no collision. Okay, so um, let's try running that and see if we can see, we wanna see at least this line. We may or may not see a collision detected. I don't know how often they happen. So we're gonna make sure that's saved. We're gonna come over here and shift refresh. Okay. And we see that, that for two cases, we found a collision. For two cases, we found, sorry, for two cases, there were no collisions. So our first two ships didn't collide. And then the next two times we tried to add a third ship, it did collide with something. And then finally, there's no collision. So now we should have three ships. with none of these values being the same in any case. There's a close approach. Those two are right next to each other. And I believe, um, I'm not gonna go through it, but I believe this game is now playable. Let me make sure that I put init back the way it should be. And um, I leave it as an exercise to the reader to continue testing, but, but um, this has not been an easy defect to find. Uh, infinite loops are always hard with JavaScript. Infinite loops in page initialization are even harder. So I hope that the exercise of trying to find it has been useful to you. Thanks for listening.